strange that he was so much older and Muslim? I thought it was okay. I mean, my mom and dad brought us up, at, you know, not to be, you know, racist or look at somebody because how they talk. So I didn't find it strange at all, you know, except for her getting married. I mean, she got married so young. When you heard that Tissy was getting married at the age of 15, what did, what did you think? I wondered why my brother would let a, his 15-year-old daughter get married. Joyce Boucher is Tissy's aunt. But, you know, then I was told, you know, well, he has a lot of money, he has land in Egypt, and it was kind of like she was going to be some kind of little queen or something. Was any of that true, the land ownership? No. No, it wasn't true. He worked at a 7-Eleven, you know. Couldn't own too much working at 7-Eleven. The wedding was just just a regular uh, Christian wedding. Gail Gartrell is another of Tissy's aunts. The reception? The reception was not. The reception was strange. The Muslim women were all in the kitchen preparing foods, um, including Tissy. And all the men are sitting in this one back room on the floor with their backs up against the wall and all the foods in there. The newlyweds quickly started a family, which would straddle both Christian and Muslim traditions. First came a son. They named him Islam. Well, she got pregnant right away with the Islam. And, um, you know, that was a big deal because it was a boy. A year later, Tissy had a girl, Amina, and another girl the year after that, Sarah. But all was not right in this family. Early on in the marriage, Tissy showed you some pictures. Uh -huh. Can you describe those? Yes, sir. It was dressed up like jihad and had a knife holding it to Tissy's throat. As if he was going to behead her? Yeah, to cut her head off. What did you think? I thought, you know, what goes on behind closed doors. And behind closed doors, Tissy's younger sister Connie says she was assaulted by Yasser. He got up and come in the living room and he grabbed me around my breast and uh, pulled me toward his lap and I'm like, you know, no, no, uh, leave me alone. And he said, no, it's okay and tried it again. And so I went to my aunt's house and I'm very terrified of what just happened. You know, I'm only, you know, 15, 16 years old. My younger sister, I, she was in the bathroom and I, I asked her, I said, has Yesser ever touched you in a way that, you know, you're not comfortable? And that's when she started crying and she told me, you know, that yes, he had. What was the family's reaction? My mom was horrified. I mean, she was just, you know, please don't tell your dad. He will kill Yesser. You know, I mean, my mom was just, uh, was scared. So it never was reported to the police or anything. The tales of abuse would get even more serious. When Amina and Sarah were eight and seven years old, Tissy, in court papers, accused Yasser of raping them. Tissy and the girls left, but eventually returned with Tissy saying she made up the charges. Why do you think, in the end, she went back to him? I think that she was scared. We didn't have a lot of money to just get up and move somewhere else. Whatever went on inside the Saeed home, outwardly, Sarah and Amina grew up to be the kind of all-American teenage girls that would make most any Texas parent proud. Good athletes, excellent students, and popular. And that, their American family says, would ultimately get them murdered. We'll have more from Greg Jarrett in Texas when murder in the family, honor killing in America, continues. Back now to the stories of teenagers Amina and Sarah Saeed. Their mother, Tissy, is a native Texan. Their father, Yasser, is an Egyptian immigrant who married Tissy when she was just 15 years old. It was a troubled household right from the very start, and things got more explosive as the girls became all-American teenagers their father could not control. Here again is Greg Jarrett. Amina and Sarah Saeed were delightful girls. Beautiful, smart, friendly, and popular. Boys inevitably took an interest in them, and vice versa. 
That did not sit well with their father, says Gail Gartrell, one of the girl's great aunts. Amina had had a little boyfriend when she was younger, maybe junior high or ninth grade. And Yasser found out about this boyfriend and he kicked her in the face. Even still, the girl's mother, Tissy, who'd married Yasser when she was just 15, would help them bend his rules, says Tissy's sister, Connie Maggio. They were not allowed to date Americans, and my sister let them do what teenage girls do. She let them date the boyfriends. Right. Behind Yasser's back. She Why? Knew. She knows that that's not right. Those girls should have their choice. But Gail Gartrell says she heard that when Yasser found out about the boyfriends, he threatened to kill his girls. He had a gun, and he was waving the gun around. And he said, I'll take you to Egypt where this is legal. Where what is legal? Honor killing. To kill you. Gartrell says Yasser did take Amina to Egypt for another reason. Her dad was trying to marry her off to like a 40-year-old man. She and was, she was 16. She was 16. And Amina told her mother, she said, I want to come home. I never want to return to Egypt again. In the fall of 2007, Amina entered her senior year in high school. Sarah, her junior. Both had boyfriends on the sly. And according to Maggio and Gartrell, their brother Islam spied on them for their increasingly agitated father. By Christmas, Tissy was worried that Yasser might actually make good on his threats to harm the girls. And once again, she took them away, driving to a relative's place in Kansas, then to Oklahoma. Yasser, who was now driving a cab for a living, reached out to Tissy's sister, Connie. Yasser contacted me and said, you know, please, Connie, don't take sides this time. Me and Tissy worked hard to get this house, and I'm a taxi cab driver, and, and you know, uh, all I want is Tissy to come back and, and the girls, and if stuff don't work out, then I'll leave and they could have the house. I mean, he sounded really sincere. You believed him? I did. Joyce Boucher says it was Islam who eventually convinced his mother to return home. It was New Year's Eve. What have you been able to learn about what happened on that terrible night? Uh, they feared their father, and yet they ended up in his taxi cab. How did that happen? Well, you know, he controlled them, so if he could talk to them, they were going to do what he told them to do. Um, when they came back from Oklahoma and all, Sarah went back home with her mom. So he had Sarah there at the house. Amina stayed at her boyfriend's. The next day, the way I understand it, Islam kept calling over there, trying to get Amina to come back. We're going to all go have dinner, New Year's Day. And Amina said, I would rather be dead than to go back home. I am not going back home. And then Tissy went over and got her. And when she got Amina back to the house, Yeser was already in the taxi, already had Sarah in the taxi. And Amina got out of Tissy's car, got in the taxi, they took off. The police theory of the case is that Yasser drove them 14 miles to the Las Colinas area of Texas near the Omni Mandalay Hotel. He parked where no one could see or hear. Then he pulled out a gun and started firing. Somehow, Sarah managed to dial 911. Harvey, 911, what is your emergency? What's going on, man? Damn, are you still there? Damn, are you still there? It's very hard to listen to the type of call. David Tull, the public information officer of the Irving Police Department, says that by triangulating the signal from the cell towers closest to Sarah's phone, they got an approximate location, but not X marks the spot. We got within, as it turned out, within about a quarter to a half a mile of their actual location. Police combed the area. Tissy was taken to the police station. Word about Sarah's 911 call got to Connie.
I'm not thinking, okay, you know, yes, there's murder in my niece. I'm thinking that yes, sir, is, you know, beating her up. Connie called Tissy. The first words out of my mouth was, damn it, Tissy. And then I said, where is Amina? She said she's with them. And I said it again, damn it, Tissy. And of course, you know, I'm terrified that my nieces are being tortured. Then my husband just jumps out of bed. He said, get dressed, let's go. While she drove to the police station, cops finally found Yasser's cab, parked at a taxi stand near the Omni Mandalay Hotel. The Irving police detective called and he said, well, I hate to inform you, but um, both girls are deceased. When I walked here, 